Well, this was it. This was probably the lowest point in my adventure. On the one hand, I was excited to see the Pacific Ocean. I was finally able to get my feet on the sand and to reach out and touch the sea. On the other hand, I was not prepared for the dismal gray fog that had shrouded everything. I knew the water would be cold, but this isn't what I thought California was going to be like at all. Where were the surfers? The girls in bikinis? And where the hell was the sun? I felt as though Brian Wilson had lied to me, as though I'd made a huge mistake. To be quite frank, this sucked. Now, to be fair, this wasn't my first time seeing the Pacific Ocean. As these clips show, even now, it was quite agreeable, especially on this beach along Battery Point. I stopped here to do some sightseeing before leaving Crescent City and the Jedediah Smith Redwoods I had fallen in love with behind me. With a somewhat hazy sky looming about the horizon, I found this to be a very enjoyable place to spend the day before getting back in the van, including a walk out to the end of this jetty, which proved to be much longer than it looked. You know, this pier didn't look that long when I started walking it, but it's a lot longer than I realized. I like how if you look over this side, it's all peaceful and calm and nice. But if you look over this side, it's like war and hell and it's coming to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. starting to get big. And close. In fact, the experience of walking around on this jetty is kind of unnerving. It's a much narrower strip than you realize. And when you're surrounded by dangerous waves crashing on one side, it's, it's even more unnerving. And in fact, there are a lot of signs that say that this area is pretty dangerous, and from what I understand, terrifying in the winter. There have even been a, a number of lives lost here. Eventually though, it was time to hit the road, and hitting the road means roadside attractions. The one log home was my first stop, a brief respite from the road, and surely an inspiration for anyone looking to build a tiny house. Given the size of the trees around here, I'm sure you could easily make yourself at home inside a redwood, although I'm not so certain how one would actually go about procuring one. Certainly, this example was roomier and in many ways nicer than my van, but not nearly as good on gas mileage. 
So I decided to move along rather than seeing what I could get in an offer to trade. Next up, the grandfather tree. 1800 years old, give or take. And I hope it lives another 1800 at least. fine crafts to choose from and interesting things to look at here, but the star was the grandfather tree. From what I understand, there are actually several attractions here to pull in the tourists. Unfortunately, it was closed when I arrived, so this was all I really saw of it. Have the chandelier tree. All right, so this is it. This is the the giant drive-through tree. I hope I fit. <laughs> this is great. This is crazy. I love it. Oh my god! I forgot I have a tire in the roof. Eventually, I arrived at my friend's beach house. I planned on spending the next day enjoying the beach. I had expected that things would get clearer and warmer as I went further south, but obviously that was not the case. Even for the end of August, I was told that this is pretty much normal for this area. Thank goodness I packed a heavy jacket. Nevertheless, I did enjoy the spooky vibe of these giant rocks in the fog and the feeling that I might see Mikey and the rest of the Goonies running along with a treasure map at any moment, even if it did trigger my seasonal affective disorder to be surrounded by so much gray. that would be feeling the warm California sun on my face, but to do that I would have to travel much further south. But that's a story for another day. these mountain roads leading down to the ocean this is the coastline road here this Irish Beach Drive it, it's fine I'm getting used to it I'm I'm getting used to like you know inches from death 